Let's start the solution thermodynamics video series and our purpose in this chapter is to lay the theoretical foundation for application of thermodynamics to the gas mixtures and liquid solutions. So let's start with the first topic which is the fundamental property relation. The fundamental property relation. Now we know that the canonical variables for the Gibbs free energy, the canonical variables for the Gibbs free energy, canonical variables, the canonical variables for the Gibbs free energy are pressure and temperature. Pressure and temperature. So I can represent this dg or d of g is equal to vdp minus sdt where p and d are canonical variables so so now for n number of moles if my system has n number of moles n number of moles so i consider my system is having n number of moles then i can rewrite this equation as d of ng is equal to nv dp minus ns dt so this is my new equation and this equation is the gibbs free gibbs free energy for a closed system having n number of moles So now we name this equation as number 1, we name this equation as number 1 and we try to put certain constraints on this. The first thing which we are going to do is, we are going to consider at constant pressure. So at constant pressure this dp will be 0 and what we can write is del ng, del ng by del t. As I have taken constant pressure so I will write p constant and n n for number of moles is equal to minus ns so you can relate this from equation 1 so i name this equation 2 also if i consider g at constant temperature then what i have is this dt term eliminates because at constant temperature dt is zero so i can write it something like this del ng by del p at constant t and n is equal to n times v so these are the two equations which we have obtained and now i am going to tell the proper or appropriate conditions for which equation 2 and 3 are applicable so an appropriate application where equation 2 and 3 are applicable is for a single phase fluid in a closed system where no chemical reaction is occurring let me write this down for a equation 2 and 3 are applicable are applicable for a single phase fluid single phase fluid which is in a closed system a closed system and no chemical reaction is occurring no chemical reaction is taking place so this is a very specific application or this case is very specific where the fluid is in single phase the system is closed and no chemical reaction is taking place but we want a more generalized thing so in order to do so we shall take our equations into the next step so for the more general case or for a more generalized case so for a more general case of a single phase open system material may pass into and out of the system and ng becomes a function of the number of moles of the chemical species present presumably it is still a function of t and p 
and we rationalize the functional relation as something like this ng is equal to a function which is represented by g of p comma t comma n1 n2 n3 and so on up till n i so as you can see that the constants have been changed here for these equations 2 and 3 the conditions were very specific the fluid used were in single phase and a closed system was assumed and also we took the assumption that no chemical reaction is taking place here the modification for this equation lies in the fact that the species present in the closed system are i ith times that means ith species are present and for each species the number of moles of that species contained in the in my system is denoted by n so here you can see that in n1 is the number of species of one part or n2 is the number of species of the second type n3 is the number of species of the third type and so on ni is the number of species of the ith, ith type so g is also a function of p and t which are canonical variables since we cannot neglect these now if i take a derivative on both sides or probably a differential on both sides what i end up getting is i need to apply total derivative here so total derivative on application on both sides gives me plus del g by del t times dt plus del g by del n1 times dn1 and this will keep on going here i forgot to mention the constants if i am taking the differential with respect to p the partial derivative with respect to p then t and rest of the moles n1 n2 n3 these are constants so i will keep this as nj here also the same thing is applicable as I am taking the partial differential with the partial differentiation with respect to t. Hence, my p and nj are taken as constants. Here as I am taking the partial differentiation with respect to n1, hence p, t and nj are taken as constants. Okay, so an important correction right here. I wrote here t constant with nj but this won't be nj this will be only n n will be constant because as I am taking differential with respect to p then all these terms t n1 n2 n3 till ni are all constants hence along with t my other constant is n here the same thing is applicable I will make this n and but here I won't have to make the change here it will be nj as it is because nj is nothing but the, the moles or the moles of the species except the one with respect to which I am taking the differential. So here I can write nj and similarly I will have my terms dg by del, del g by del n2 times dn2 with constants p, t and nj and this will go on further. So I will generalize this into a summation term. I can write this as del g by del p at constant t comma n times dp plus del g by del t at constant p comma n times dt plus here I will write this entire terms as summation of i del ng by del n g by del n i del n g by del n i p comma t comma n j p t n j are constants times d of n n n n i so here one thing i would like to say that instead of the small g you can replace it by capital n g because it is the capital n g which is basically my function so i can write this entire thing again as d of n g is equal to del of ng or probably n capital G by del p at constant t n n times dp plus del of ng by del t at constant p n n times dt 
प्लस समेशन ऑफ आई डेल ऑफ एन जी बाई डेल एन आई एट कॉन्स्टेंट पी टी एंड एन जे डॉट डी ऑफ एन आई सो दिस इज वॉट वी हैव ऑप्टेंड आफ्टर ऑल आवर सिंप्लीफिकेशन एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डू अनदर सिंप्लीफिकेशन ऑन दिस एंटायर इक्वेशन सो आफ्टर डूइंग ऑल दिस मैथ आफ्टर डूइंग ऑल दिस मैथ वी हैव रीच द पॉइंट वेर वी नीड टू डिक्लेयर वाई वी हैव बीन डूइंग ऑल दिस सो दिस लास्ट डेरीवेटिव टर्म दिस लास्ट डेरीवेटिव टर्म राइट हियर विच इज डेल एन जी बाई डेल एन आई दिस इज अ वेरी स्पेशल टर्म यू मे ऑलरेडी नोटिस दैट दिस टर्म सिग्निफाइज द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ माई गिप्स फ्री एनर्जी विद रेस्पेक्ट टू द आय स्पीशीज और विद रेस्पेक्ट टू द नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ द आय स्पीशीज प्रेजेंट इन माई सिस्टम दिस टर्म इज ऑफ वेरी हाई इम्पॉर्टेंस एंड इज गिवेन अ नेम विच इज म्यू आई और केमिकल पोटेंशियल केमिकल पोटेंशियल केमिकल पोटेंशियल इज ऑफ ग्रेट यूटिलिटी एंड इट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट और probably the fundamental driving force behind all mass transfers so let me box this and so what we can write is we can generalize this equation further into a more cute format which is so by definition chemical potential mu y chemical potential mu y equals to del ng by del ni at constant pressure temperature and nj nj are the rest of the rest of the moles of the particular or individual species present except the ion species so if i implement this mu y into the previous equation which we just had so we try to simplify this equation and what we get is del ng del of एन जी इज इक्वल टू डेल एन जी बाई डेल पी एट कॉन्स्टेंट टी एंड एन टाइम्स डी पी प्लस डेल एन जी बाई डेल टी एट कॉन्स्टेंट डी टी एट कॉन्स्टेंट पी एंड एन डॉट डी टी प्लस समेशन ऑफ दिस एंटायर टर्म विच नाउ आई विल रिप्लेस बाई न्यू आई which now i will replace by mu y times dni times dni hence i can further simplify this i can further simplify this if you remember the conditions i obtained in the previous slide i will try to use these two equations equation 2 and 3 you can see del of del ng by del t at constant p and n is minus ns and del of ng by del t at constant t and n is nv so if i put these two equations then what i get is i replace them here and what i get is del of ng by del p uh, del p this entire term is n of v so it becomes nv dp and del ng by del t this thing becomes ns dot dt plus summation of my chemical potential times dni so this is what i get this equation is what i get after doing all the math and hence we come across a new term which is mu y mu y is the chemical potential now an important thing which i would like to say about this chemical potential is for a homogeneous system for a homogeneous solution for a homogeneous solution if one asks the question that what is the driving force for mass transfer in a homogeneous solution then one can reply that concentration gradient or concentration difference between these points are responsible or is the main driving force for mass transfer but this answer will only be correct if the solution is homogeneous for heterogeneous solutions for heterogeneous 
solutions for heterogeneous solutions if you are asked the question that what is the driving force behind mass transfer in a heterogeneous solution your answer should be chemical potential chemical potential Chemical potential is the driving force behind the mass transfer for heterogeneous solutions. For homogeneous solutions, you can refer to this as concentration gradient or concentration difference. Concentration difference. So this is an important point that I would like to state. So in the next lecture we are going to discuss about chemical potential and phase equilibrium. We are going to discuss more about chemical potential and phase equilibrium. Thank you.